Hi everyone, my name is Tim Sickles. I'm a member of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers here in Idaho. Um, I'm an avid fly fisherman, hunter, outdoorsman, and a fly tying junkie. Um, I love tying and fishing stone flies, uh, so today for you I'm going to be tying a Foam is Home Stone Fly version 2.0. Uh, this is a fly I've been working on, hence the 2.0, uh, for a few years that uh, that's done well for me in a variety of stonefly hatches yellow sallies, squalas, golden stones, and salmon flies. Um, today I'm tying it in a size 4 for salmon flies since that hatch should be coming here pretty soon uh, so we gotta be prepared. Uh, anyways I hope you enjoy uh, without further ado. So I'm going to start with a Tiempco 200R, a size 4. Uh, you can use uh, any curved dry fly hook. A long shank dry fly hook will work well. Um, the Arex sedge hook is a great hook for this. Firehole 718, uh, Daiichi 1260 all work well. Uh, so you can see I've wrapped my thread all the way back to the bend. and even going to go a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring it back up about two-thirds of the way up the hook shank where I'll tie in my tail. Uh, my tail is a medium round rubber leg in black. Uh, and you can see I've just taken a piece that's about oh, maybe twice the length of the hook and fold it in half and I'll tie it right in there by the tips. And just stretching it helps me keep it on top as I'm tying it in. I'm going to wrap it back all the way to where I stopped my thread, even a little beyond. So one of the keys to wrapping all the way back is just so you can maximize the length of the abdomen. Um, be tying the abdomen out of a piece of one millimeter uh, Rainey's Crosslink Foam, and this is in the cinnamon color. You'll notice I've colored the one edge yellow. Uh, that's to help uh, accentuate the segmentation when it's wrapped. Um, one little trick, and I just colored it to save the time for the video, but you can clamp the one end of the foam into the vise and hold it out and color it. That just makes it a little easier to have one end controlled by the vise. So now I'm going to tie it in. I've cut a, a point here to make it a little easier to grab. And I'm going to tie it in such that the colored edge is on the side facing the back of the hook so that when I go to wrap the color will be showing. Uh, the next step is I take a, a thin piece of two millimeter foam and it doesn't really matter what color I'm using the cinnamon here just because it's what I'll be using for the rest of the fly but you can use any color you want and then I'm taking two strips and I'm going to be tying them in on either side of the hook and what this does is it gives me a little bit more width on that body it creates kind of that flat and wide profile of a, of a stone fly. It also helps give it just a little bit more flotation than if you just had the foam wrapped around the just the one millimeter foam wrapped around the body. So you can see I've got those secured. Now I'm going to kind of spiral wrap my way up to the front. I want to keep is the you know the width, the thickness of this foam as much as possible trying not to compress it down. And the trick here is just keeping the foam on the sides of the hook as you tie it in. You just kind of guide it as you're working your way up the hook. I'm just pinching these. Get about to the same point where I tied my legs in. Like I said, it doesn't have to be pretty at this point. This is all getting covered up. Um, but what you end up is that flat profile on the side and nice and wide. I'm just going to 
clip off these butt ends and compress those down. And now I'm going to take just a little bit of super glue and run it along the top and bottom of the fly just to give it a little bit of extra durability. I think when I add these pieces of foam on the sides, it's important to do this just to help firm that up. You don't have to worry about the big toothy browns chewing through it. So now I'm going to start wrapping this and I'm going to make two really tight wraps there to create some thickness at the back and then start wrapping my way forward uh, covering about half to two-thirds of the foam from the previous wrap as I go forward wrapping all the way up to about that two-thirds point where I tied in the where I stopped the the legs and the foam strips see that so I'm just going to compress that off and I can just tear off that piece so now I'm ready for my underwing for my underwing I'm using two different colors of um, EP fibers I've got a PMD and the blue wing olive color uh, so you can see what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of wiggle them together to blend them just a little bit and then I'm going to take this long strip oh, that's about two, two and a half times the length of the fly I'm going to tie it in right at the middle right on top of that point where I tied off the body get that good and secured then I'm going to take and fold back the front portion secure that like so and that wing's not going to go anywhere so now, trimming these right about the you know the back of the hook here. The next step is the hair wing or the over wing, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I'm using Nature Spirit um, cow elk back strip, which I think they also call salmon fly hair. The color is about right and it has good length, so it works well for a fly of this size. Um, I'm going to take a clump about the diameter of a pencil and clip that off right down towards the bottom. Uh, the key with the fly this size is just making sure you have enough length to work with. So I'm taking, pluck out any of the under fur and the short hairs. And then I'm going to take my comb and just brush out the, uh, the rest of the under fur before I stack it. So I want to stack it so all the tips line up good. So I've got those nice and aligned. I'm going to take and pull them out so they're pointing towards the back of the fly remove any stray fibers and then I want to tie this wing in just a slightly longer than the underwing I'm tying it in right on top make a couple loose wraps and then pull up to secure it tight and then I'm going to go about a third of, of the clump a third of the clump much like you would an elk hair caddis or a stimulator to secure that wing. Come in here and trim out those butt ends. Trim them down nice and tight to the fly. Doesn't have to be perfect because it's all going to get covered up, but uh, it'll help keep a cleaner head and keep that slimmer if you trim those nice and tight right now. Dropping a little bit of super glue in there just to secure that. Keep this thing lasting as many fish as you can. Get those tied down nice and tight. Make sure I got the wings set properly. And then I'm going to work my thread forward up to the eye. Back about halfway. 
so I can tie in my antenna. Now my antenna, I'm using a small round rubber leg in black. Basically doing the same thing that I did with the tail, folding that in half. Then I'll tie it in. Once I have it secured, then I can stretch that as I tie it in. I'm going to tie it up tight behind the eye. I'll just clip off these little excess pieces. So now it's time to tie in the head. Uh, for the head, I'm using a piece of cinnamon foam. Uh, two millimeter cinnamon foam. I've cut this piece to about the width of the hook gap. Um, and then I'm going to take and cut to a point. And all this does is it just makes it a little easier to tie in. So that's what I end up with. And I'm going to have two pieces one for the top and one for the bottom basically the same thing um, you can see from from tip to the butt end of that piece it's about the length of the fly I leave a little extra length just so that I'm not gonna fight it when I go to tie in the, the head and thorax so now I've got that tip I can grab a hold of that real easily with a nice tight wrap and then just kind of wrapping forward to the eye what I want to make sure of is that I have that wrapped really tight against the eye of the hook so that when I pull it back I don't have any exposed thread so I can take and compress that down I'm going to flip the fly over if you have a rotary vise it's handy if not you can still do it just have to finagle it a little bit doing the same thing here making sure I get that tied in nice and tied up behind the eye compressing any of that uh, foam behind behind the head so I can leave it like that and now I'm going to take and pull this foam back and tying the head one loose wrap one nice tight wrap and that secures that good so I'm using about a third of that distance from behind the eye to where I tied in my wing and stopped my uh, stopped my body and then doing the same thing on the on the bottom side just a couple tight wraps there and that's secured so now the next step is tying in the rubber legs. Uh, the first set of legs here. Um, I've knotted. I've gone ahead and knotted all my legs just to save some time for the video. But the trick to knotting rubber legs: one is use a much longer piece of leg than you're going to need. That way you're not fighting it. And two, when you pull the leg tight for that knot, pull it tight, release tension and then pull it tight one more time and that should lock it into place so now what I'm doing is I loosely tied that in between the two pieces of foam on the camera side and then I'm going to take tighten that in rotate it into place I want the distance from the body to that joint to be oh maybe a hook gap width um, and then I'm not worried about what's happening here because that's all going to get hidden and eventually trimmed out. And then doing the same thing on the other side. Not worrying about how it's angled when I first tie it in. Then I'll roll it into place. The angle I'm looking for. matching the length there. So that's kind of what I have. Now I'm going to make a couple more tight wraps just to secure those. If they rotate at all, just get them worked back into place in between the two pieces of foam. And then I'm going to pull my 
top piece of foam forward, sneak my thread through, and make sure I grab both of those legs as I sneak that through there. Because uh, all I'm doing is just securing these legs so that I don't have to worry about them falling out when I'm fishing them. Nobody likes a four or five leg cat or a four or five leg stonefly. Any bug for that matter. Not that the fish count, but. Now I'm bringing my thread actually back over top of that wing just a little bit. Um, I think this helps to shape the foam and kind of forces that wing to lay down a little bit as I pull the, the foam over top. So I'm stretching the foam just a little bit as I'm tying it in, doing the same thing I did with the head. One, and two, and pulling nice and tight on that second wrap. And then do, I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here. One, and two. Now you'll notice I have a gap on this side. It's going to take squeeze and work that around a little bit. And that gap should fill in and that's what you should end up with. Now I'm going to trim out the foam here and I do this as a v-notch if you will. Wind up like that on the top and on the bottom. I'm going to take and trim straight across and then nip off each of those little corners. I'm going to nip off each of the corners on the top as well. Just so they're not visible underneath beyond the wing. So the next step is before I tie the legs in, I'm going to doctor up the fly just a little bit with a sharpie. I'm just going to run some orange down the middle here. And then come in with a little bit of black on the sides. And like I said, you can kind of go as crazy with this as you want. Sometimes I'll you know, color the the abdomen before I get to this point. Um, work that marker around. I've gotten plenty of these eaten without doing any coloring on the on the body, but just adds that little bit of a realistic touch. And as you fish it, that color seems to fade out a little bit. I think it looks better and better the more you fish it. The next step is to tie in the rear legs here. I'm going to do my side first this time. Securing it between the two pieces of foam. That knuckle coming about two-thirds of the way back on the body. Pull that nice and tight, and then come in and do the same thing on the camera side. Just going to rotate that into place. So that's what you end up with leg wise. Now I'm just going to make a few wraps and really tighten that down. And I'll take and trim these into place. like the middle legs to come up just about to the front legs. Kind of make all these cuts on a little bit of an angle. It's just a personal preference. Some of this length is really just by feel. You know, if you really want it to have a whole bunch of movement, you can leave the legs leave the legs a little longer, do your joints a little further. It'll really dance. Might as well do the uh, tail while we're trimming. Again, cutting them on just a little bit of an angle. It gives that illusion of the taper on the tail and the antenna.
I don't like the antenna super long just because they will fight with your line a little bit. Sometimes they'll end up just getting wrapped around. So the last step now is to put on a little indicator post. I have a piece of one millimeter orange foam that I've cut into a strip. Uh, I'm just going to cut off a small piece of that. Grab it just by the end here. Tie that in. Being careful to keep my thread between the the legs there. And then I can come in with my whip finisher and finish this thing off. Double whip finish. This thing will be ready to fish. Just taking, trim that thing to a point. Now, one thing you can do for a little more durability and keep the legs from slipping around is take a little drop of super glue and put it right in between here. Um, but just be careful not to get any on the legs because it will make them bend funny. Well, I appreciate you watching my video. I hope you find some time to try out this fly. And, and if you do so, send me some feedback. Let me know your thoughts. Um, now go subscribe to the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers YouTube page for more videos like this and more videos about public lands. Uh, make sure to follow BHA's efforts and uh, protecting our public lands and fighting for access. Uh, you can find more of my content on Instagram. I have two pages you can follow. My business page, which is at Whiskey and Wind Knots, and also my personal Instagram, which is at Tim underscore Sickles. I have a lot more fly tying content there. Well, thanks for watching. Happy tying.